When I first heard of the 9-11 attacks in the US, I felt completely shocked and also horrified at the sight of people jumping from buildings rather than be burnt to death. That was something you just couldn't imagine how terrible that was. And in the heart of New York, which is a city that I knew quite well, and then there were many, many acts of heroism, the firefighters who did what they could. It just seemed absolutely incomprehensible to us that something so terrible had happened. 9-11 should have been seen as a crime, as a terrible crime, but not as a justification for war. And it was the case at the time that even within the Taliban in Afghanistan, there were some who said, look, we should hand over bin Laden. And that, it seems to me, would have avoided a war, would have brought justice to the victims of 9-11. None of that happened. Instead, Bush, determined to go to war, called it the war on terror. The deliberate and deadly attacks which were carried out yesterday against our country were more than acts of terror. They were acts of war. Ably abetted by Tony Blair, saying, Let us reorder this world around us. There was a whole coterie of people around Bush who wanted war, and they were absolutely determined to get it. Not just Bush himself, but actually if you look at Donald Rumsfeld, if you look at Paul Wolfowitz, the people who were central to the project for a new American century, which was very much about regime change, about increasing war, in what they saw as the post-Cold War world, where they didn't have the opposition from Russia or China that you might be looking at today. And therefore, they saw this as an opportunity. Whatever people might have thought of the criminal route, the war one was much more popular in Washington. It was popular in Downing Street. The eyes to the right, 412. The nose to the left, 149. I think when these politicians go into wars, these wars are quick, they're relatively painless from a Western point of view because casualties are low, the casualties are much higher among the local population. So they think it's something that which will make them popular. And some wars are popular, at least in the short term. Immediately after the attacks, I set up what became the Stop the War Coalition. When we had the organising meeting, a guy got up and said, we shouldn't just be campaigning to stop the war, we should be campaigning against Islamophobia and against the attacks on civil liberties because these are going to get much, much worse as a result of the war. So Islamophobia became central. It was always linked to it. The Muslims obviously were more aware of that than anybody because they were at the sharp end of this and that really politicised a lot of Muslims. But I think also for non-Muslims, we thought, well, this is going to be a new form of racism that is, is going to grow. The greatest achievement of Stop the War was obviously the biggest demonstration ever in British history, and it still remains the biggest demonstration ever. At least one person from every 24 households in Britain went on a demonstration on February the 15th, 2003. So that was a huge achievement, as was the fact that it was an international demonstration. We estimate 30 million people marched across the world that weekend. Obviously the failing of Stop the War was we didn't stop the war. And that was of great regret to everybody. I think we'd have had to have had strikes against the war, industrial action, to have stopped it at that time because Blair was so determined to do so. Although there were a number of strikes and there were a number of walkouts and the school students of course walked out which was very very important but by and large we weren't able to do that and that's obviously a source of huge regret not least because of the terrible costs of these wars not just in Afghanistan but we've seen in Iraq, in Libya, in Syria, Yemen I mean these just continue. September the 11th was a dreadful event 8,000 deaths in Afghanistan brought back none of those who died in the World Trade Center. Thousands more deaths in Iraq will not make things right. It will set off a spiral of conflict, of hate, of misery, of desperation that will fuel the wars, the conflict, the terrorism, the depression and the misery of future generations. The media lies promoting the war on terror started very early on. There was a story which turned out to be totally false, that one of the hijackers on 9-11 was connected to Iraq. This turned out to be a totally fallacious story. There were all sorts of stories like that. The Evening Standard had a headline which said, Saddam can strike British interests in 45 minutes, a blatant lie, and that was promoted by Alistair Campbell, and along with a whole number of other lies that he promoted. The media are extremely complicit in just buying these stories that are, are basically put there by the security forces and by the Ministry of Defence. We managed for a time before the Iraq war 
to get some publicity and to get on programmes where we would challenge some of this. But I can tell you, the day that war started, that totally changes. It's almost like there's a sort of military takeover. Progress toward our objectives has been rapid and in some cases dramatic. It's all about the military manoeuvres, the politicians, we've all got to support our troops. One of the most incredible scenes soon after the war started was Andrew Marr's adoration of Tony Blair and his great success allegedly in Iraq. He said that they would be able to take Baghdad without a bloodbath and that in the end the Iraqis would be celebrating and on both of those points he has been proved conclusively right and it would be entirely ungracious, uh, even for his critics, not to acknowledge that tonight he stands as a larger man and a stronger Prime Minister as a result. What a piece of hubris this was, matched by, of course, Bush himself piloted his own plane onto an aircraft carrier, got off the plane and said, mission accomplished. That's what they thought. They thought by April, May 2003, we've ended the war in Iraq. Major combat operations in Iraq have ended. In the Battle of Iraq, the United States and our allies have prevailed. How wrong can you be? How wrong can you be? The war on terror has totally failed in its own terms. We were told it would eradicate terrorism. Terrorism is much, much worse than it was. An absolute failure of regime change. The Taliban are back in Afghanistan. The West don't like the Iraqi government, which they see as too pro-Iran. Any of the places where it's intervened are in a worse state than they were before the intervention. That is the simple truth. There are huge numbers of refugees in the world today, many of them as a result of these wars. Groups like ISIS, which are still causing all sorts of problems in Syria and in Iraq, it also exists in parts of Africa. So what we're doing is we're spreading terrorism and we're spreading a worse form of terrorism in the places where we intervene. We see far more attacks on Muslims than was the case 20 years ago. Plus, of course, the whole civil liberties issue. When I think of somebody like Julian Assange waiting extradition to the United States in Belmarsh, where he's living in the most awful conditions. I mean, these are all things that you can link indirectly to the war on terror and its failure. The victims of 9-11 have never got justice. The victims of the wars have never got justice, and these are essentially the same people. It doesn't matter what religion you have, it doesn't matter what race you have, it doesn't matter where you come from. These are all people who suffered because of this, and I think if we want to respect the memories of all those who've died, of all those who've been injured, of all those who've suffered as a result of 9-11 and its consequences, then the best thing we can do is continue to campaign against these wars and to continue to hold our politicians to account, because one of the big scandals is none of them have been held to account. I know very, very well how much we rely on alternative media and I think Double Down News does a great job. So if you can support them on Patreon, they'll be very grateful and I'd be very grateful. Join the future of journalism, join Double Down News on Patreon. <laughs>